sacred place. They pray fasting and prayers on the theme, their secret place. The one we are looking at dwelling in the secret place. And our key verse for today is Psalms 91, verse 1. The Bible says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The April theme, your April focus, if you need a spiritual focus, for the month of April, you know, when we give a theme for the month of April, it's for you to use as a spiritual focus is the sacred place. One thing you need to desire in this month is to go closer to God. Praise God. Enjoy the secret place. Amen and amen. And in the secret place, there are encounters. In the secret place, God complete things. In the secret place, a lot of things begin to happen. And I know that God will be doing marvelous things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us start by looking at briefly what is the secret place. What is the secret place? And I want us to understand that if you are really serious, if you really want to develop a vibrant relationship with your God, then you need to learn to dwell in the secret place. There is no way that you can develop a powerful, strong, accurate relationship and fellowship with your father when you don't know how to dwell in the sacred place. And when you begin to study your Bible, and if you are somebody who likes to study the Bible in different uh, uh, translations, you know, when I talk about translation, there are some Bibles, you see the Amplified Version, you see the New King James Version, the, 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 the New International Version, uh, the, the New Living Translation, you see the variant Bible, tens and tens of Bible translation. Sometimes to understand the scripture better, it's always good to read the same scripture in different translations that you can understand better. So when you see different Bible translation, you see the term secret place is used in a different way. And the word secret place has appeared both in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Some translation use secret place as shelter, you see covering, right? And you see dwelling, rather than, of course, secret place. But you see in the translation of the King James Version, you see dwelling in the secret place in the same statement. But it tries to connote that you know, it's a covering, it's a shelter, but not really physical. It is something spiritual, right? And when you begin to study the Hebrew, you understand that secret place in the Hebrew word is fitha. And fitha means to hide or to be concealed. And when you move to the New Testament, in Matthew chapter 6, you see that while Jesus was delivering a, a sermon on the mount, he was giving another powerful explanation of the secret place. Jesus was saying, and when you read Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 to 6, you will see, Jesus was saying, and when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Your secret place does not mean that people should see you while you are praying. People should not see you and just know that you're fasting. Some people do that when they're fasting, they wear, they wear a, a sad face, they look funny, they don't look neat, they look cranky and all of that. No, 
And when you want to say one or two words, no, oh, I am fasting. No. Right? So, as shortly I said to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, you who was talking about believers, you who was talking about you and I who have grown or who are growing in the things of the kingdom. But you, when you pray, go into your room, go into your secret place. And when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in the secret place again. So the secret place, we are going to explain it better in two dimensions. A secret place can be you excluding yourself, going into a prayer place, which talks about a location, a secret place where you can experience focus and pay attention to the father as you pray. But again, there is a deeper secret place which is more spiritual. God is spirit. And the Bible says, and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. So in this particular verse in Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 to 6, this scripture is talking about secret things in basically two dimensions. The physical secret place where you exclude yourself from friends, from television, from social media, from all kind of distractions, all of that, and authentically, genuinely pray with an open heart, with the desire to encounter the Father, with the desire to have an experience of fellowship with the Father. It talks about your Father who is the secret place, which is the spiritual dimension of the Father. Praise God. So it's very important for us to understand this because it, when you understand this and understand the power of the secret place, that is when you begin to grow. Let me tell you something. Anybody you see commanding power, spiritual power and authority in the name of Jesus is somebody who understands the dynamics of the secret place. Praise God. And the secret place, in the, talking about the spiritual secret place, talks about the state of your soul in its relationship with God. That's another dimension of the secret place. The state of your soul in its relationship with God. And when you talk about a soul, a soul has three elements. Your mind, your emotions, and your will. These three things makes up a human soul. So, when talking about the secret place in, in spiritual times, we're talking about the state of your soul in its relationship with God. What does that mean? It means your mind is focusing on God. Your emotions are focusing on God and your will, you are keeping yourself to dwell more, to study more and to pray more. When you begin to do that, that is somebody who dwells in the secret place. You are in your office, you are in your business side, whatever you do, you don't lose consciousness, you don't lose sight. Everything that you do, you are very conscious that you are a child of God. You don't, you don't cheat, you don't lie because your mind focuses on God. So the secret place doesn't mean that you carry a place on your head up and down. No, it is also a state of living, a perpetual state of being conscious that you are of God and you carry the very life of God. Praise God. So the secret place is also about going to a place to pray and having a prayerful life, but also it is a state of your soul. It's relationship with God. For example, if you have a mind and your mind is always full of, let's say, alcohol, gossiping, wickedness, fornication, all of these things, you are not in the secret place in that dimension. When you have, when, when the state of your soul is focusing on God as far as your relationship with God is concerned, then you are in the secret place. Psalms 27 verse 5 says, For in the day of trouble, he will conceive me in his tabernacle. In the secret place of his tent, he will hide me. He will lift me up on a rock. 
So here, the psalmist is not talking about the actual tent in which you can hide your physical things. He was speaking of the state of things that God gives you in the midst of trials and trouble. And you can only experience the, the peace of God and the protection of God if you also operate like somebody who is conscious of this dwelling of the secret place. Therefore, to dwell in the secret place means to live in a place of continually drawing near to the Father through communion. Follow this very well. When you understand this, it's going to play a big role in how you live your life and how you command authority, power, and most importantly, the divine presence of God. Is you know, for you to like I always give an example. Many of you have done that many times. Sometimes you're in trouble or you are sick or you wake up with a strange disease. You just text me immediately, oh uh, doctor, please. I am sick, this happening, all of that. And right there and there, I, 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 I go on a voice note, I pray for you, or I call immediately and I pray for you. And there's the testimony immediately, or a few hours later, a few later, you're telling me, oh, I feel better. Oh, the thing has disappeared. Oh, this has happened, all of that. That only happens if I am perpetually, continually drawing nearer to the Father through communion. And that's the meaning of dwelling in the secret place. To dwell in the secret place means to live in a place of continually drawing near to the Father through communion. Live in a place, I'm talking about location, I'm talking about your state, the state of your soul, because you are a temple. I'm talking about the state, you, your mindset, your emotions, your will. I was telling somebody that, you know, I don't drink alcohol, and if you have a meeting in a, in a beer parlor, I'm not going to come. I don't have meetings. In, it's not because uh, the Bible says don't drink or don't go in, in, in drinking spots. No. The point is, there are some places that when you go, or there are some things that when you see, it affects your mind, and it can take you away from that place when you enjoy fellowship with the Holy Spirit or with the presence of God. Because the things that you see can paint your soul. You understand? So, there are some things that you decide to protect yourself from because you don't want to be involved with things that can begin to distract your soul and your spirit man. For example, I don't like to listen to worldly music, what they call worldly music. I don't have it, I don't care. Not because the Bible doesn't say it is a sin to listen to Makusa. It's not a sin. The Bible doesn't say that. But because I want to protect my place where I can continually be in the place of fellowship, I need to do that. There are some people that they, they listen doesn't affect them. It all depends on your spiritual growth. Right? The other that they, they listen doesn't affect them. They are so grown that. The, 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 the state of their soul and their spirit that worldly music cannot affect the state of their soul, for example. So when you know yourself, you, there are certain things that you draw boundaries to protect yourself. Praise God. So to dwell in the stupid place means to meet a place of continually drawing nearer to the Father through communion. Let me give a, a, a funny example. Let's say you have a scripture in your mind, and during your day, you are replaying that scripture in your mind. Let's say you did your Bible studies in the morning, 5 a.m., 6 a.m., and then there's a scripture that is caught in your spirit. And that as, you, as you're doing your thing during the day, that scripture is only in your mind. You are meditating on it. You are quoting it and all of that. Do you know that that is a state of dwelling in the secret place? Because your soul is meditating on that spiritual word, on those spiritual words called the scripture. Through the scripture, you're drawing near and nearer to the Father by communion, by having a communion with the word. 
And who is the word? Jesus. And one thing about the secret place is, it's a place and a time where you talk to him in the morning, at night, and throughout the day. Without the motivation of being recognized by people, but you have the desire to know him. That's another definition of the secret place. For example, if you are some me, I, I, I like to have time. I have a time in the morning that is always my prayer time and meditation time. That's also part of the secret place. Every morning for the last couple of years, there's a particular time that I fellowship with the Father. I study the word, I pray, and I pray. That's also a secret place. For some people, it is in the evening. Before you go to bed, you take an hour, a 30 minutes, whatever time you're feeling for yourself, but you intentionally. Remember, you also shut out distractions. You lock the door. You cannot sit and you're watching television and you're talking with your family members and you have the Bible before you and you're studying. Or you're chatting on WhatsApp and have a Bible. And you're, that's not dwelling in the secret place in that dimension. Because it's all about a place where you talk to him and he talks to you. You talk to him through prayer. The Holy Spirit helps to talk to him while helping you speak in tongues. And at the same time, the Holy Spirit takes the things from the Father's heart and begin to reveal to you in the place of prayer. As studying the scriptures, the Holy Spirit begins to bring the scriptures to you in a way that you understand in a higher dimension. That is the stupid thing. And again, one thing about this is you are not doing it with the desire for people to see you. One thing that validates the dwelling in the secret place is your desire to know more of God. Your desire to experience more of God. That is one thing that validates dwelling in the secret place. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. The Bible says, for who has shown, for who has known the man and the purposes of God? The only way you can know the man and the purpose of God for your life, for your career, for your business, for your family, is for you to dwell in the secret place. For you to grow and have the mind of Christ. But we have the mind of Christ. The only way you can have the mind of Christ is if you dwell in the secret place where Christ can fellowship with you. You dwell in the secret place where you study and meditate on the word and Christ can minister to you. And the idea of dwelling in the secret place originated with God. Why? Because God is spirit. As I always say, God is everywhere but you don't encounter God everywhere. If you are not in the state of mind when God can speak to you, you are not going to encounter God. There are many times that I'm in a car, I'm in a plane, I'm somewhere, and God speaks to me about something. That only happens if while I'm doing that, I, was, I, I am in a state of consciousness. But at the same time, sometimes you are just chatting with friends and watching film and all of that, it's hardly for God to speak like that. For the people God speaks to them, I've never experienced that because I am distracted. But anytime that I am focused on this, sometimes like God has spoken to me many times in a shower about something. God has spoken to me many times when, let's say I want to go to bed and I don't fall, and I don't fall asleep immediately and then God speaks to me about something. Because at that time, I'm not really distracted. My mind is just clear. Maybe I'm thinking about a scripture or maybe it's even a scripture, but as long as I'm not distracted by something crazy, he can intervene at that time because I am conscious of something. You understand? So the idea of the secret place originated from the Father himself. Why? Because he is spirit. He is spirit. And his glory is beyond your human capacity. 
The only way that you can experience the Spirit of God, the only way that you can experience the glory of God, which you don't need your human sight to perceive it, you need your spirit man to perceive it and to experience it. You need to meet him in the secret place of your heart in order to commune with him. That's why when you want to pray properly, you need to keep out distractions so that your heart can be doing to him. The only way that you can experience God is when your heart is tuned to God and you can commune, you can commune with him. There is no way you can talk about dwelling in the secret place and your heart is not in what you're doing. Praise God. It's very important to understand this. That's why David chapter explained this in Psalms 91 verse 1. He said, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And there's one thing about dwelling in the secret place is there are certain things that cannot happen to you. Because if as long as you are dwelling, you are under his shadow. There are certain things that cannot really harm you. That's why for you to have divine health, for example, for you to live a life that sickness doesn't torment you, you need to be somebody who dwells in the secret place. Because as long as you dwell, you will abide under a shadow. You cannot abide under the shadow of God if you don't dwell. The only way you can live a life above accidents is for you to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. So that you, he keeps you, you are perfect under his shadow. God is spirit. For you to encounter God, you need to go to where you can encounter him. And it is in the secret place. You cannot desire to have a powerful encounter with God and you are you, 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 you are speaking in tongues and telling WhatsApp message. I'm praying right now. Blah, 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 right now. Two minutes. Blah, 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 WhatsApp. Do it. But you have to actually pray. Even though you have been doing blah, 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 for, 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 for one hour, you have to actually pray because your heart was not doing. The state of your soul was not focusing on experiencing the Father and meditating and having fellowship with Him. And one thing about dwelling is to live there. You cannot visit God and expect the blessing of somebody who dwells. Praise God. Dwelling means you live in there. There are some of them, we visit God. We visit God. You cannot visit God and expect to see a dimension of God that other people see. Praise God. Stop visiting God. Let me give you an example of visiting God. You pray on Monday morning, and then you come again and pray like after one week. Yeah, you keep beeping God. You do not dwell in. That's visiting. You come and go. You want to abide under a shadow, you must live in there. You live a life of righteousness for one week. Next week, you go back to sin. Come and cry for forgiveness. He forgives you, as I always teach you guys. If you cry for forgiveness for one million time, God will always forgive you one million times, but you will never grow. You will never grow in the kingdom. There are certain things that you cannot speak and they happen in the kingdom because you don't have access to those dimensions of power and authority. Because you are living on and off. You are not perpetually dwelling. You are visiting. Dwelling means to live there. You have the same address with God. You move to his secret place. That's the meaning of dwelling. And the only way to dwell in the secret place is we must walk away from the enticement of the world. We must walk away from things that distract us from dwelling. That's when the power of fasting comes. You know, fasting doesn't change God. 
Fasting changes you to have an encounter with God. Fasting enhances your frequency to connect with God more, to hear God more. Fasting enhances you to obey God more. Fasting enhances your consciousness of the God life, of the glory that you should be experiencing. Fasting is for your benefits, not for God. Because it makes you conscious. It kills the flesh and amplifies your spirit. So for you to dwell in the tricky place, you must learn to put the enticement of the world. That's why you can, you, you will not only fast on food. You can, during these three days fasting, you can minimize how much time you watch movies. You can minimize how much time you spend on social media. You can minimize hunger with friends. You can cut off certain things, certain enticements, so you can have a higher time to, to dwell after fellowship with the Father. Dwelling in the secret place means you must be willing to quiet your heart, to quiet your mind before God and allow God to reveal himself to you. You cannot work in the secret place if you don't know how to quiet your heart and to quiet your mind. And that's why you do it better when you lock yourself as Jesus is saying in Matthew chapter 6. You must lock yourself in the room. Shut out friends. Shut out entertainment. Keep off social media. Whatever. You must be willing to quiet your mind, quiet your heart before God and allow God to reveal himself to you. And one thing in the ticket place as you dwell is honesty and trust. You must, you must be honest. You must sincerely desire to experience God. You cannot join God in the secret place when you are not willing to be honest with him, you are not willing to be transparent, and you are not willing to be totally open to him. One thing that will enhance your secret place is your willingness to be transparent and to be honest with him. Praise God. Let me randomly share like five things, for example, that should happen to people who are dwelling in the secret place. Number one, people who dwell in the secret place create time to read and meditate on the word. They read and meditate on the word. And one thing that, again, as I said, a dwelling in the secret place is also a state of being. It's a state of living. What does that mean? Throughout your day, you are conscious that you are a carrier of God's power. You are conscious that the Lord dwells in you. You are conscious that there's an anointing in you. You are conscious that the Holy Spirit lives in you. It's also dwelling in the secret place. You are fully aware of this consciousness. So you read and you meditate on the word. That's the first thing that people who dwell do. Number two, they are conscious. They are conscious that God is in them. They are conscious that the Holy Spirit is in them. They are conscious of the very life of God that they carry. Number three, they speak in tongues. I'm not saying that because you cannot speak in tongues, it doesn't mean that you don't dwell in a secret place. But this is one of the things that people who dwell in a secret place also do. And of course, we're going to pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit towards our prayer time. So get ready. If you have always desire to experience the baptism of the Holy Spirit and to get gift of speaking in tongues, it, only is, it is only given by the Holy Spirit. Praise God. And all you need to do is to be open and desire it. And the Holy Ghost take over from that. But the third thing that people who dwell in the secret place do is that they speak in tongues. Sometimes, as I, and this one thing about consciousness, when you are conscious of the very life of God in you, the dwelling of the Holy Spirit, before you know it, you start speaking in tongues. Sometimes I'm doing something, I just realize I'm speaking in tongues. That is being empowered by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and my consciousness that I am a carrier 
of the Holy Ghost. Number four, is it the fourth thing? The fourth thing that people who do, do is that they pray strategic prayer points for themselves, for their family member, what they call intercession. People who dwell in their secret place pray strategic prayer points. They, 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 they are not just living excited, careless lives. No, they pray strategic prayer points. When you dwell, one thing about dwelling is that God even gives you prayer points too. The Holy Spirit tells you things to pray about. It happens to me many times. There are many times that I'm, I'm just, maybe just singing a, a nice worship song and the Holy Spirit will minister to me. Pray about this area of your business. Pray about it. Pray about this part of your career. Pray about this for your family. Pray about it. Those are called strategic prayer points. And you get this when you, when you, when, when, as you keep on growing in your work with God, the Holy Spirit begins to tell you what to pray about also. Apart from that, you can also create strategic prayer points for yourself and pray about it. For example, if you are dwelling in the secret place, you can begin to notice certain patterns in your life. And you can start to create prayer points about it and begin to break those evil patterns. For example, if you notice that in your family, people get married and divorce, or people get married and, and they don't have good marriages, that's an evil pattern that you need to create a strategic prayer, look for scriptures, attach to it, and begin to pray against that evil pattern that it should end and you will not suffer it. You can observe another evil pattern that people in your family live hand to mouth. They are never financially stable. You should be worried about that. You can create a strategic prayer point and begin to pray against that because people in the secret place never lack what to pray about. Let me tell you something. If you are listening to me and that time you don't even know what to pray about, I will tell you, you are not dwelling in the secret place. You need to step up. Praise God. Is somebody being blessed? Are you being blessed? He said that this dimension is very important. When you understand this dwelling in the secret place, your life can never be the same. Your spiritual life can never be the same. One thing that changed my work with God and with God is understanding dwelling in the secret place and disciplining myself to dwell in the secret place. Praise God. It, it is the understanding of dwelling in the secret place that changed my, my ministry as a person, as somebody called to serve God. Naturally, my first gift, my major gift is the teaching gift. I don't understand the gift of the, 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 the gift of the ministry. My major gift is the teaching gift. I have an apostolic calling, but my primary gift is the teaching gift. So I didn't have the healing grace. I didn't have the... Uh, 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 the, the prophet, all of that. But the more time I began to spend with, I wanted to have God in the God of process. Go and study your Bible. Can I just wake up one morning and begin to command power and authority? No. God releases it to you bit by bit. God never just leaves everything to everybody. Go and check. Go study your Bible. Bit by bit. Bit by bit. And until you are dwelling, He cannot begin to trust you to empower you one step at a time. To empower one step. By the moment I was just praying, and God just told me, healing grace has been relieved. And from that day, from that day that God told me that any time I pray with somebody who is sick, there's always something striking that happens. Even sometimes just a WhatsApp message. Because I'm conscious that this grace to pray for the sick and see healing has been released already. And it was released in the place of dwelling, in the place of prayer. One time, go to bring, oh, the prophetic is being activated. You don't just wake up and certain things start manifesting. No, that is the power of dwelling. That's the power. And if all of these things are in dimension, they're in dimension. So you need to dwell. One thing that people who dwell do is obedience. Show me somebody who perpetually dwells in the secret place of the Most High. I will show you somebody who obeys the Father. The Bible speaks sternly against, let's say, wickedness. The Bible speaks sternly against uh, uh, um, adultery, fornication, lifestyling, funny things. The Bible speaks about these things. People who dwell in the secret place obey these things and live a righteous life. 
if you still struggle when it comes to obeying and living a life that is righteous and setting yourself apart as a holy person, you need to check your ability. You need to check your dwelling. Your dwelling is questioning. You are still full of anger. You are full of dishonor. You are full of jealousy. You get angry. Some things, because in the secret place, God begins to purge you. In the secret place, the Holy Spirit begins to prune you. The Holy Ghost begins to prune you in the secret place. Now, what there are people in church who have funny, funny characters. Okay, wait, are you really a Christian? There are, we, we, there are many church goers, but very few witnesses. Very few Christians. So if you are really dwelling in a secret place, you obey the Father. You prefer for people to laugh at you so you can obey your Father. Then you are dwelling in the secret place. You prefer to lack something, to do something, than to do something and gain money. You prefer to be broke than to break the heart of the Father. You prefer to obey the Father than to do something to please yourself. Then, if you, and, and if this, this is not false on you, you naturally, you, you, you are just, how do you call that? You are allergic to certain things. You naturally just hate to do certain things. You, you are not even forcing yourself. Because you perpetually dwell in you, well, in the city place, the father begins to rebuke you. His love begins to drag you from certain things. Even sometimes I, Okay, many times. Sometimes I want to like for those who even if, if you used to follow me on social media like three, four, five years ago, you notice that I used to comment on a lot of things. Like when things happen, I just go post, I just go post. Even nothing, I don't do that again, like of recent, like in the last two years. Because God definitely just sometimes it's very clear, don't do it. It's not don't comment. This thing will happen that it could be a political something, it could be a societal issue, it could be Something happened like in both or something happened, and I like to comment on it. I will be resented. I will be held back not to say. It. It's not for you to say this one. You are not supposed to talk about it. But my flesh, me, the typical joy bird, will like to write an article and speak against it, or just say something sarcastic like about it. The father will say, hey, "Calm down. It's not for you. Walk away." And we are all, sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes it's hard because the flesh is too powerful. That God is helping everybody. So these are some things. So you need to begin to check yourself. Are you really dwelling in the circuit place? These six things I have mentioned that people who dwell do. Check yourself. Are you doing these things? And these are just some of the things. One of the things is sacrifice. You are willing to sacrifice everything for the for the sake of God. That's what the people do I do. I remember one time we were talking about emptying their wallet for the things of God. I remember the first time I did that. I didn't know what happened. I didn't know what came on me. I wanted to do something in church. That was all the money I had. I gave it all. See if I could do it. With that sacrifice. That's one of the things that happens to you on your day. You are willing to sacrifice for the sake of the kingdom. I'm not saying you should empty your wallet. I'm saying, but you can just, just decide, you can keep money aside just for the things of God. You are very conscious about it. That's one thing that happens in the second place. As we, as we run up, so that we get time to pray. Here is somebody. In order for you to enter God's presence, in order for you to perpetually dwell in the secret place, all you have to do is to learn how to turn your attention to God and believe with faith that you will encounter him. These two things are very important when it comes to dwelling in the secret place. Number one, turn all your attention to him. When it's time to pray, your private prayer time, for example, Turn all your attention to him. Go offline. Put off your internet. Put on your television. Just do it. That's why, that's why people talk about mountains. You go to the mountains and they can turn your attention to him. 
You go on a retreat. You rent a hotel for two, three days. So you are in a place where there are no distractions. You turn all your attention to experience God. And number two, not only turning attention, believe with a childlike faith that you will encounter him. Like in this particular administration right now, this is a secret play because our mind, our purpose is to experience God. This is a secret moment right now. This is dwelling right now because the state of our soul, our mind is focusing to experience God. Our emotions, our will is focusing on God. But that is not enough. You must believe that you will experience the hand of God as a ministry to you. You must have the expectations to encounter the Father. That is part of also dwelling in the secret place. How do you turn your attention to God? It's very important. How do you turn your attention to God? Number one, always make sure that there are no distractions. It's very important. Always make sure there are no... Many people don't know how to do this. Now I decided to add these few steps that I, I use them and I think they work. That's why I like my best stuff. Let me tell you something. Most of the time in the evening, I don't pray for I go to bed, actually. My best stuff to the Father is in the morning. Very early because it's, it's calm. I'm, I'm still to start my day. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gone online. I've not checked emails. I've not put them out. I never put on my WhatsApp. If, I, if you anytime you see me online in the morning, know that I've finished my business with God. Because I know that, that I know the nature of my work. Sometimes I have meetings till late and now I just fall and I just fall I sleep. So you also need to know your schedule and not so my best time is in the morning because there are also less distractions. Whether it's two hours, it's three hours, it's one hour, whatever as the spirit leads sometimes. I just make myself available and I fellowship. But the difference also now is throughout the day, I am always conscious. Consciousness of the very life of God is important. Consciousness of the Holy Spirit speaking to you is very important. And just speaking in tongues, our problem is also important. It's part of dwelling like that. As I said earlier, it's part of dwelling. Praise God. So number one, how to turn your attention to him. Number one, cut out distraction. Okay, cut out distractions as much as you can. Number two, recognize that God's presence is with you and within you. Always have this consciousness. Have this consciousness. This is only for those who have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. If you have opened up your mouth, you have opened up your mouth and confessed that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that he died for you. If Immediately you declare this allegiance to him. Immediately, Jesus came in into your life. It's within you. You just need to grow more and know more and experience him. Right? So, number two, you need to recognize that God's presence is with you and within you. Okay? Number three, you need to recognize that through Christ Jesus, you have access to the Father anytime. Yes, that's why Jesus died. Jesus died to reconcile us to the Father, to the throne of grace. Okay? And this word is always good to confess your sins if you know that you're not living a righteous and holy life. Because many people find it difficult to turn their attention to God because of the way they live. And for some people, they even find it difficult to even start to pray because they know they're not living right. But let me tell you something. If you just fornicate now, you're living from bed, run to God. Whatever sin you've ever done, run to God immediately. If you run away from God, the devil will cut your life. No matter how awful you think your sin is, just go, Father, have mercy. Confess it. Any sin that you hide and you have not opened your mouth to tell God, Father, look, I did this and this and this and this, have mercy. That confession is very powerful. Okay? The next thing to do to turn yourself to God is for you to meditate on scriptures and to worship God. Yes. Sometimes you can, you can be so disturbed with life issues 
Anytime I'm disturbed with something, what I do is that I look at the scripture that I open and I, and I study them, I meditate on them. Then I, 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 I sing some worship songs. Then I can tune myself to focus on Him. We are humans, we have problems, we have life issues. So the, one of the best ways that you can take yourself outside, you can, you can make yourself to forget life challenges and focus on God at that particular moment is worship songs can help. While you sing along, you begin to bring your spirit, your soul, and everything back to Him gradually. And sometimes as they're doing that, you are quoting some scriptures, you are declaring some scriptures, and all of that, they contribute to turn your attention, both physical and spiritual attention to God. Okay? This helps a lot. One thing about dwelling in the secret place that it gives you audacity to speak. It gives you audacity to speak things, to communicate the power of God. First Kings chapter 18, verse 15. Elijah made it very important. The first time I read this statement, I said, what gave this man this audacity to say like this, to, to speak like this? The Bible says, that's First Kings chapter 18, verse 15. The Bible says, and Elijah said, as the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand. Do you know what that means? Before whom I stand. This is somebody who dwells. What gives you a man the audacity to pray for the sick and the sick gets healed? Do you know what that powers? Because you know where you stand. You know where you dwell. You know who is backing you. You know the shadow that is covering you. You know where you are abiding. What gives, what gives Elijah the audacity? Before whom I stand, he understood that day. There is a place where I dwell. There is a presence I carry. Because of this presence I carry, because of this dwelling that I have with the Father, my goodness, before whom I stand, I think, from today you are free. So there is a dimension of authority. There's a dimension of power that you only begin to command when you know where you stand. I want to ask you a question. Where do you stand? Where do you dwell, child of God? That you are challenged that you are faced. And you rightfully stand and command it to come to an end. Psalms 30 verse 20. The Bible says, In the secret place of your presence, you hide them from thought and conspiracies of man. In the secret place. God can only hide you from the evil plot of your friends, from the evil plot of your colleagues, from the evil plot of people in your community. God can only hide you from evil conspiracy when you dwell in the secret place of his presence. And the Bible says, you keep them secretly in your shelter from the strife of tongue. Yes, you know, God can keep you secretly from jealousy. God can keep you secretly from backbiting. God can keep you secretly from evil uh, uh, communication. That's what Psalms 13 verse 20 is talking about. You keep them secretly in a shelter from the strife of the tongue. Child of God, day one was to break down the dwelling in the secret place so that you understand what it means and what it takes. Because this is the place where when you begin to grow, let me tell you, when you have access to the secret place, you can command things to happen to you. The secret place is very powerful. The secret place is the place of power. The secret place is the place where you experience the Father. I want to encourage somebody. The Lord said in this, in this month of April, he will be completing things. That's what God told me. He will be completing things. You want to experience completion in your life? Well, in the secret place. What experience completion in your relationships? 
completion in relationship. You want to experience completion in your career. You started something, no completion. You are always almost there, but you are never there. Sometimes you feel that, oh, you will still be financially stable, but you are never financially stable. Sometimes you feel that, oh, you, you're going to get married this year, but you, you didn't get married last year. Completion. Nothing. You want to experience completion. Understand how to dwell in a secret place. Because when you abide under the shadow of the Almighty, you can command things to come into completion. In this month of April, there's an anointing for completion. But that anointing will fully manifest when you dwell in the secret place. That anointing will fully manifest when you dwell in the secret place. Now that you understand what it means to dwell in the secret place, I want you to make a commitment. We're about to pray. We're about to pray. Get set for an encounter. We're about to pray. But I want to start with the first group of people. If you hear two groups of people, number one, you have never, never really been serious with this God thing. You know, some people have never been serious to God to this God palaver. They're just visiting God. You have never really said, Lord Jesus, I want to live for you for the rest of my life. You have never opened your mouth to declare Jesus as Lord over your life. You have never really believed that he died on the cross for your sake. You have never really believed that on the third day he defeated death, rose up. Now is the time for you to do that. Number two, this is for those people that visit God. You don't dwell yet. You are on and off God. Maybe you are listening to me. The last time that you were part of this prayer session was two months ago. You just you just bypass, you just by arrow join today. Your local church, you don't even go again. You are in long time when it comes to the things of God. You are fallen behind. You want to rededicate, you want to recommit to the Father. You want to tell God, Lord, I'm sorry I, I went astray. I am sorry I left the presence. I'm sorry, Lord, I left the secret place. Lord, help me. I want to come back. I want to come back. I want to live for you. If you are in these two classes of people, lift up your hands as a sign of surrender. Mm, there is somebody right now. You are under the power of the Holy Spirit. You are doing a recommitment. You want to recommit your life. You are under the power of the Holy Spirit. You are shaking right now. Who is that person? You are shaking right now. They say grace coming upon you. God wants to do something beautiful in your life. You are somebody right now. You want to recommit yourself to God. And then you started shaking. God wants to, God wants to do some business with you. You need to be able to indicate. If you are there, indicate. I want to pray for you especially. God wants to do business with you. The Holy Spirit is only moving right now. Please be coming. Who is that person? You are, you, you are doing recommitment. You, you, you backslided. You stop, you stop, you stop taking the things of God serious. But right now, right now, right now, you don't remind that look, Lord, Lord, it's, been, it's me and you right now. And then as immediately as you made that statement, you started shaking. The anointing of God took over you. This hand being raised up. Is that you? Lord, touch that person. Yes, God wants to do business with you. Serious business in your life. Serious business in your life. This person, you are having the same... I was sharing a testimony earlier of a girl that she sent an person she has passed her exam. And immediately she sent that text the Holy Ghost minister to me that the testimony is not yet complete. That God is going to complete. And for that to happen, you should tarry more in the presence of God. This same person, you need to tarry more. God wants to do something mind bring with your career. But that can only happen if you are dwelling, you are dwelling, you need to dwell. There's another person, oh my goodness, relationship. You, you, you are expecting your boyfriend to, he, he said, your fiance, you know, a serious ritual. You were expecting him to propose last year. He did not propose. And this year, it has not happened. You are still expecting again. 
is one of your hard desires this year that your boyfriend should propose to you and you guys get married this year this year like that this year the one of your major prayer points this year who is that you need to dwell and god needs to touch that man god needs to not only touch him god also needs to touch him that's a great man too but god he needs to take god serious you have been talking to him that he needs to take god serious but he has not been serious with it Go and tell him that I have said that he take God serious. Who is that lady? Can you confirm? Oh my goodness. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Touch somebody, Father. Yes, let's go back to those people who wanted to recommit themselves to God and wanted to accept the Lord Jesus. Lift up your hands and repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I accept you today as my Lord and personal Savior. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins to reconcile me to the Father. Take away my sins, Jesus. Write my name in the book of life. I accept you today as my Lord and personal Savior. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you made that prayer, you have declared your allegiance to the, to the Lord Jesus. And that's all it takes. If you did that genuinely, authentically, he is already inside of you with the Holy Spirit. Just lift up your hands again. Let me pray for you. Father, I dedicate these ones to you. Empower them to live for you. Empower them to live for you, Lord. Give them the grace to live for you. By the authority in the name of Jesus, I command the hand of the earth to lift them in the name of Jesus. I command the dreams of the enemy to end today in the name of Jesus. There is somebody who just lifted up your hand to pray this prayer and you are sick. Who is that? You are sick in your body. You just made this prayer of this confession of accepting Jesus Christ. You are sick. There's some pain in your body, strange pain. That's a demonic pain, demonic sickness. And it, who is that? Pain, strange sickness. I command that sickness to go. Yes, the devil hear this. Okay, the person's on Facebook. All right. I pray for you, Odette. In the name of Jesus, I command the hand of the enemy to leave your body now in Jesus' name. You are healed in Jesus' name. Jesus paid the price for you and healing. By his stripes you have been healed. I command you start healing in your body now in Jesus' name. I break the hand of the enemy from your body now in the name of Jesus. Walk in divine health from this very moment in the name of Jesus. You are healed. You are healed. Yes, Lord. Somebody be connected. We're going to pray and I will ministering, prayer and ministering at the same time. Yes, Jesus. Just open your mouth and begin to worship God. Just open your mouth and begin to worship God. Unmute yourself and worship Him. Unmute yourself and worship Him. Just say, Father, I worship you. The Lord, I worship you. I Thank you.
Thank you, Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. Upon your mouth, we're going to pray. You're going to pray. Now, because to dwell in the secret place, one thing that you need to enjoy perpetually is to enjoy the loving kindness and the mercy of God. When you operate in the mercy of God, he begins to draw you closer to the secret place. You're going to pray, Lord, lavish upon me your loving kindness. Lavish upon me your tender mercy and draw me closer to your secret place. It is the mercy of God that makes you clean, that makes you worthy to enter the secret place. It is the mercy of God. And we know cry for mercy. You don't know where you have messed up. Some people you messed up and you know in in this area you have messed up. You are not living a life that brings glory to God. You don't just enter the secret place. You enter the glory of the secret place and only his mercies, only his mercies and loving kindness can draw you to the secret place. Put your mother and begin. Your love. Lord, lavish upon me your loving kindness. Lavish upon me. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. There is somebody you are a worker. You're a worker. There's something that you have been doing wrong in your office. And you have been having serious thoughts to change and repent. Repent before it's too late. Repent before it's too late. Stop doing it before it's too late. If not, you'll be exposed and disgraced. Make a U-turn and God will fight for you. God will bless you. You are, you are trying to bless yourself. I told you guys one time, we are doing the pathways of living a worthy life. There are certain things that when you begin to do, you are telling God that he is not, he cannot bless you. You want to bless yourself. And when you begin to live life like that, God hides off from you. God is going to bless you, but God is going to bless you his way, not your way. And there's nothing you do ungodly against another human being that is the blessings of God. Walk away and cry for mercy. Walk away and cry for mercy. Walk away and cry for mercy before it's too late. If you want to talk about it, please reach out to me. There are some people I need to give you to pray. It's very important. Walk away and cry for mercy. It's better to live righteous and struggle financially so that God can settle you. 
let me, let me tell you something about God's blessings there. Don't put God in a in a box. That's why you expect that God only bless you through your job. No. He, he owns the use this the universe. He can he can bless you from any source. Not putting God in a box. The same like you run a business. Sometimes well, God will bring a strange customer to buy in millions of you and change your life. Stop thinking that God, God is only going to bless you through particular customers. No. Many people don't get to experience the blessings of God because they put God in a box. They are trying to steal from their office and do stuff because you feel that that's the only way you're going to be blessed. You're, you're putting yourself in a danger zone. Apart from just stealing and covering your heavens, you're also stealing from somebody that you, you can pick a curse. Be careful about that. Repent and walk away. Choose the ways of God and see how God will lift you in your career. In Jesus' name. We're going to pray a prayer point. Prayer point number three. On your own, you cannot dwell in the secret place. The flesh is very powerful. Distraction. The world is so powerful. You need the help of God to dwell in the secret place. You need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. You need the help of the Holy Spirit to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. So you're going to pray, Holy Ghost, help me. And this is what we're going to, I'm going to pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But you need to pray for and ask for His help. Just say, Holy Ghost, come and help me. And especially those people you have never prayed in tongues before. You have never experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This prayer point is very important. Just pray and say, Holy Spirit, come and help me. Come and help me to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Come and empower me to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Open your mouth and pray, somebody. Begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to ask him. Ask him to come and help me. Holy Spirit. Yes, somebody up, open up in your spirit. Let the channels of your heart open up. My own father, I cannot believe this was the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come and help me. Holy Spirit, come and empower me to dwell in the secret On my own, I'm going to dwell. On my own, I'm going to struggle. Holy Ghost, come and help me. Holy Ghost, come and help me. Come and help me to dwell. Come and help me. Yes, Holy Ghost, just lift up your hands. If you desire the baptism of the Holy Spirit, just lift up your hands. There is a lady here, you are married. The Holy Spirit is going to come upon you so that you can bring stability in your family. In your marriage, your marriage is experiencing some instability. The Holy Spirit is coming upon you right now. It's that lady, yes, Holy Ghost. Sometimes you must not fall down. Remember, you need to have faith. Direct your attention to God to baptize you with His presence and His Spirit. And have faith. Have faith. Remember, the Holy Spirit is already inside of you. If me telling you accepted Jesus Christ is already inside of you, then we just need to activate for Him to come alive. And the first thing you need to act in, Holy Spirit, take over my life. Holy Spirit, come and move, take over my life and be in expectation. Lift up your hands. But there's a first person already, that lady. You are receiving an encounter with the Holy Spirit. It's coming with wisdom, wisdom and strange grace. 
to bring stability in your family. Yes, Holy Ghost, touch that person now. Touch that lady now in the name of Jesus. Touch that lady now in the name of Jesus. Two gentlemen, two gentlemen, get ready. Yes, Holy Ghost, touch them. Touch them in a special way. Touch Holy Ghost. Touch. Take over that life. Holy Ghost met them at the point of their need. Holy Ghost, they desire your baptism and your power. Take over their lives. Take over their lives, Holy Ghost. Empower them. Empower them to dwell in the city. Empower them to dwell in the city. Touch in the name of Jesus. Touch in the name of Jesus. Take over. Saturate that life, Holy Ghost. That you read that life, Holy Ghost. There is a young lady you are going through battles in your family. Like, like, like from your from your parents' side, siblings and parents, they are going through battles. That still is one problem to another. You need the help of the Holy Ghost to maneuver that. I don't know who that is, but the Holy Ghost is baptizing you now. To go through that. After today, you begin to see a new dimension. You begin to walk in a new dimension. Just connect somebody, connect, connect, lift up your hands. For some people, you feel a shaking in your right hand. Somebody is shaking in your right hand. Yes, Holy Ghost. Yes, Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is empowering you for that battle. Oh, Kabbalah Zeta, that Kabbalah. Oh, that businessman, that business person crying for the empowerment of the Holy Spirit so you can turn your business around. Receive that empowerment. Receive that empowerment. Receive that empowerment. In the name of Jesus. Inda kabala zeka da kutusi kene kabala. Touch Holy Ghost. Touch Holy Ghost. Touch that person Holy Ghost. Lord, we have come here to encounter you. Lavish us with your presence. By your mercy and by your grace, lavish us with your presence. Yes, yes, Lord. Ebe lezi kabala zeka da. Is they can be recover an anointing that breaks the spirit of delay, an anointing that breaks the spirit of delay is coming upon somebody right now in the name of Jesus. Today marks the end of that delay. That thing that you have been expecting for completion this month, it will be completed in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord, prove me. Somebody must just pray, just pray, just pray silently. Just say, Holy Ghost, prove me. Just say, Father, prove me. The Bible says in John chapter 15, Jesus speaking, Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will bear more fruit. God wants to prune some people right now. And this pruning is going to affect your spiritual life and your financial life. God is going to prune somebody. He used to pray for 30 minutes. God is going to prune you. Start praying for one hour. Yes, yes, yes. There's some pruning going on. There's some pruning going on. There's some, those of you who have been faithful in your finances. You have been faithful in the way you manage your finances. And you have been faithful in the way you pay your tithes and you invest in the kingdom. 
there's some, there's a lady, there's a lady. You have a percentage of your money that is not tight, it's not tight. But you give to God to support the works of God. Who is that lady? It's that indicate. There's a lady here right now. It's not tight. Apart from paying your tithe, there's a percentage of your monthly income that you dedicate to. Just give to the things of God. Touch that person, Lord. The Lord is prone to your finances. You will never remain the same financially. Open doors that will change your financial life. The Lord is bringing people into your life that will change your financial life. In the name of Jesus. Yes, faithfulness and diligence and finances. That's what the Holy Ghost minister. You are not careless in the way you manage your finances. That's one. And then number two, you use your money to serve God. Your finances will not remain the same. Then God is trusting you for the next level. God is trusting you for the next level. Yes, somebody say, Lord, prove me. Lord, prove me. Lord, prove me. Prove me to bear more fruits. Lord, your word says, your word says that anybody who bears fruit, you will prune them to bear more fruit. Lord, prune me in my spiritual life. There's somebody praying. There's pruning going on right now. I see somebody here. What has, what has, your prayer life will never remain the same. The Lord is pruning your prayer life. Remember, you must be bearing fruit. And then the Lord prunes you. The Lord is pruning somebody's business. Your business is like a ministry to you. You want to use your, you are very serious on how you're going to use your business to bring glory to God and to find out the things of God. You have started doing that in a small way. God is pruning your business for greater heights. God is pruning a business for greater heights. God is pruning a business for greater heights. In the name of Jesus, Lord, honor your word in that person's life. Lord, honor your word in that person's life. There is a relationship I'm seeing. It's still a boyfriend girlfriend relationship. But you guys are very spiritual. You guys, you pray. You actually pray together. You have time that you come and you pray together. It's a godly relationship. It's a godly relationship. God is pruning that relationship. It's going to end up in marriage and it will be a beautiful marriage for the glory of God. A marriage that will be complete, financially complete, materially complete, spiritually complete. It is of Jesus. It is done. You guys should maintain that spirit. God is seeing you. God is seeing you. God is seeing you. God is seeing you. Lord, prove me. Yes, somebody pray. Lord, prove me. Lord, prove my business. Prune my life. Prune my time. Yes, yes, somebody stay connected. Stay connected. Yes, somebody stay connected, stay connected, stay connected, stay connected. Is it a Lord? Honor your word and prune us, prune us spiritually, Lord. Prone us in every area of our lives. Prone us, Lord. Prone us. Prone us to bear more fruit for your glory. Prone us to bear much fruit for your glory. Yes, everybody connects. They say grace of pruning. They say grace of pruning. They say grace of pruning. There's somebody you are just laughing anyhow. Who is that? You are just laughing. They are anointing. You are just laughing. You are just feeling. You are just feeling joy in your heart. That's God doing something. That laughter is permanent in the name of Jesus. That's something. The Holy Ghost is doing something. The Holy Ghost is doing something for you. It's permanent in the name of Jesus. Lord, prove me. 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 Lord,
Yes, somebody pray. The anointing for completion. There's an anointing for completion. Just pray. Just make a declaration. Father, the anointing for completion. Lift up your hands if you can. Receive the anointing for completion. The Bible says in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. Lord, anoint me with the anointing for completion. If there is a particular thing that you started and you expect completion this month, lift it up to God right now. Lift that thing up to God. Maybe you started something and money got shot. The anointing for completion can bring the money. Maybe you started something to travel abroad. It didn't go well. The anointing for completion can redirect that thing to work. Yes, somebody just pray, Lord, the anointing for completion. Baptize me, Lord, with the anointing for completion. In the name of Jesus, the anointing for completion. Yes, yes, Lord, touch somebody. Touch somebody. Touch somebody. Touch somebody. Touch somebody. Who is here that just finished a 30 days fasting program? You are praying for a turnaround in your life. 30 days fasting program for a turnaround in your life. Who is that? The anointing for completion. There are certain things that when they experience completion, your life turns around. The anointing for completion. Receive that anointing in the name of Jesus. Receive that anointing in the name of Jesus. Receive that anointing in the name of Jesus. The anointing for completion. The anointing for completion. The anointing for completion. Thank you, Lord. Lift up your hands and make pray for you. As we round up, yes, Lord. The number four signifies balance. We are in the fourth month. We are in the fourth month. The number four signifies balance, stability. The number four signifies completion. On the fourth day, God finished the creation of the material universe. On the fourth day, God created the sun and the moon, balance day and night, balance. I decree and I prophesy into your life. Let your life experience stability from today in the name of Jesus. Let your finances experience stability in the name of Jesus. Let that marriage, that marriage that is shaking from today, I speak stability in the name of Jesus. I speak stability in the name of Jesus. That business that is shaking. That business that has been shaky for the last six months, I command that business to be stable now in the name of Jesus. That career that has been shaky, that person, that person that you have been having on the part time jobs, incomplete jobs, I command your career to be stable in the name of Jesus. I command your career to experience stability in the name of Jesus. That hand to mouth financial life. That hand to mouth financial life. I command a new dawn in the name of Jesus. Let your finances express stability from today in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, that unstable health crisis, that health crisis, I command stability in your health. I command complete healing in your body in the name of Jesus. Let the light of God shine. Let the light of God shine. Let the light of God shine in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. If you are born in the month of 
of every rest of your hand. Put your hand over your head. Let me pray for you. You were born in the month of April. Lord, I lift up those who are born in the month of April. Father, we thank you for their lives. Father, we thank you for preserving them and for protecting them. Lord, I lift them up to you today in the name of Jesus. Father, bless them. Father, bless them. The blessing I'm talking about is the blessing. There's another dimension of blessing, which means be empowered to succeed. Father, bless them in the name of Jesus. Be empowered to succeed in this new age in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare everything that concerns you will start falling into please and places in Jesus' name. Let the grace of God speak for you in this new age. Let the favor of God exalt you in this new age. Let the power of God, let the grace of God distinguish you in this new age. In the name of Jesus. Every pending testimony, let the Lord complete by his grace in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I pray for everybody in the month of April. Your month is blessed in Jesus' name. Your April is blessed in the name of Jesus. Your April is blessed in the name of Jesus. Whatever project you have to do this year, this month of April, it is blessed in Jesus' name. Whoever is looking for a job, let the Lord provide for you a good job in the name of Jesus. I pray for your business. May your business experience a new turn in this month of April in the name of Jesus. Throughout this month of April, you are preserved in your going out and in your coming in in the name of Jesus. Anything that you find to do in this month of April is blessed in Jesus' name. Whatever you touch will experience the glory of God in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. My goodness. Just thank God, somebody. Just say, Father, thank you. Lord, thank you. Just say, Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Father, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you have done. Thank you, 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 Amen and amen. Praise God and praise God. My goodness. Today was good. We thank God for today. Thank you all for joining in this first day of our April fasting and prayers. I hope you were blessed and I know that your life will never remain the same in Jesus' name. This is just day one. Day two continues tomorrow, same time, 3 30. A.M. Cameroon time for day two encounter. It will be marvelous. Come with expectations and know that God will be doing mind-blowing things in Jesus' name. See you tomorrow. Invite somebody. Tell somebody about our fasting and prayers program. Remember, we are all evangelists of the professionals and entrepreneurs fellowship. Our sole purpose is to direct people back to God. Also, as I would like to say, during our fasting and prayer time, please always make sure that within the day, you find time to pray and to study the word. If you stay without food from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., you did not pray, you did not study the word, you, you are just doing stuff. You are just stuffing yourself, right? You are just doing weight loss, okay? But if you find time to pray all towards the evening before you break, I know people can be so busy, work and all of that, before you eat, I always recommend that. It's not it's not like it's written somewhere, but because before you eat, find time to study and to pray, all right? It's very powerful with that combination. Jesus said, this one can only go out with fasting and prayers, okay? 
All right, God bless you and see you guys tomorrow, same time.